And that's all the coverage we have of last week's game. Now we're going to take a chance to break down the playoff chances with an in-studio guest in Patrick A. Log, sports desk reporter extraordinaire. How are you? I'm doing well, Bonnie. Thank you very much. And it's an exciting time as all 10 boys and girls teams from Torrance are in the CIF playoffs and seeded. Very exciting. This is the first time in a few years that that's happened. But before we get to the playoff predictions, let's go ahead and break down the final standings. We're going to start with the Bay League. And in the Bay League, West Torrance finished tied for second with Peninsula with a 7-3 and three record. And they were tied because they lost twice to, Penins to Losinger and lost once to Peninsula. And, you know, the boys team was actually predicted by a few local newspapers that they would finish in the bottom of the standings. But uh, I would have to say that Coach Paul Nataki and his crew really outdid themselves with a great season. Yes, as they got a number nine seed in CIF playoffs. And now let's go to the Bay League girls final standings. And there, West Torrance finished tops at the record of 9-1 first league title since 2004. That's very exciting. And Coach Caparasso was with South in 08, and they were a number one seed then. And they will go to Pasadena, and they better go ahead and keep the top team mirror. So that's going to provide a challenge for them. Let's go ahead and go to the Pioneer League girls' final standings. And in the Pioneer League girls, tied for first was South Torrance and Torrance, finishing with a record of 8-2. and two, But right behind was North Torrance at 7-3. and three. At one time in the season, they were all tied at 6-2. and two. I know, and really coming back, Torrance had a great center. Uh, Ayana Ayono. And she has really done a number on the Pioneer League. And we will go ahead and get on to the Pioneer League boys standings. And in the Pioneer League boys standings, North finished first 9-1. and one. However, the only loss was against the bottom feeder, El Segundo. That was El Segundo's only win in the Pioneer League. Bottom feeder, bottom feeder. oh man, that makes me nervous. <laughs> Torrance boys, though, they were struggling. They lost to Centennial. They play Rosemead, but uh, they have a losing record at home. Let's go ahead and talk. And by the way, South Torrance is an at-large team, so they do have a chance to make it all the way in the playoffs. Good luck to them. And now let's go to the Delray League girls' final standings. And finishing third was Bishop Montgomery at 4-4. Four and four. They struggled, losing all uh, four times to St. Bernard and Sarah. However, last year, St. Bernard finished fourth and went all the way to the state championship final. So maybe they could do the same thing. That is true. And their first game is against Notre Dame. And they're a first-round common opponent. They lost to St. Paul, but the Lady Knights beat St. Paul by 20 both times. So it should be should be an easy matchup, but you never know when you're going on the road. That's true. Let's go ahead and take at the final a look at the final league standings in the Del Rey League. As Bishop Montgomery finished second, six and two. The only two all losses, obviously, to Sarah. However, they did beat Sarah in regular in, in non-league play back in December. So maybe uh, they'll get a revenge in the finals. But they will have a tough division, as it is a super division in Division Four Double A. That just means that all their sharpshooters that took different turns scoring double digits and double rebounds, they're really going to have to be on their game. Patrick, now is your chance to go ahead and break down the playoff predictions for us. Thank Thanks, Bonnie. The five Torrance girls teams are all participating in CIF. The teams are spread out in three different divisions. North has moved to the higher division 2A. West, South, and Torrance are all in Division 3 AAA. Now to the breakdown. West won the Bay League for the first time since 2004, and they are seeded number one. The Lady Warriors finished 22-5 with only one league loss at Palos Verdes. They've won 10 out of their last 11 games. West is hoping to get the sting out of last year's loss to Torrance in double overtime of CAF playoffs. The Lady Warriors host against at-large team Pasadena in the first round. Pasadena may have a 500 record, but they almost beat top team Muir out of Division 4 AA, losing by only two, so they shouldn't take the Bulldogs lightly. West is led by Chanteline Trudeau and Nicole Nataki. South High tied for the Pioneer League Championship with Torrance and won the coin flip to be the top Pioneer team in CIF. The Lady Spartans are seeded number 12 in Division 3 AAA and host Roland in the first round. Even though Roland is under 500, South did lose to Centennial earlier this month, which does cause some concern that Roland could pull off the upset. If they pull through versus Roland, most likely they would have a tough second round game versus Gar, which is seeded number 5. South is led by Alyssa Yim, their top scorer, Jean Doulet, and post player Marissa Todi. Torrance got the second spot out of this Pioneer League and is coming in winners of the last five games. The Lady Tartars will be hosting Santiago out of Garden Grove, but a home game might not be the best news for them as they are only 5-4 at home while undefeated at 7-0 on the road. 
The Lady Tartars had a good run last year, making it to the quarterfinals. But to do that this year, they may need to upset Kennedy in the second round, who's only lost twice since January, and both of them have been to Yorba Linda. The Lady Tartars are led by post player Iana Iono, who's just now rounding into form after missing most of November and December. They're also helped out by guards Fate Matsuda, Kayla Yamamoto, and Kristin Mejia. North is a number 13 seed, but because they finished third in the Pioneer League, they got a road game in the first round in Anaheim against Savannah, who has won eight out of their last nine games. If North does get through the first round, they would have to beat one of the top teams, and North is 1-5 against the top teams of Division III AAA. The Lady Sackens are led by Clarissa McAtugal, Alicia Nishi, and Ashley Ellis. Now let's move on to Bishop Montgomery. The Lady Knights had high expectations going to the Delray League, but have struggled finishing third with a 4-4 record, with losses coming against top teams Sarah and St. Bernard. Bimani's battle-tested enough as they played 23 games against seeded teams in this year's CAF playoffs. However, in games against seeded teams in Division 4 AA, they are 1-6. The Lady Knights go on the road in the first round at Notre Dame Academy. If they make it to the quarterfinals, they would have to go against number 1 seed, Windward. The Lady Knights are led by seniors Devin Brookshire and Ariona Sampson, and also helping out this season has been freshman Christine Delapina. Now to the guys. All five of the Torrance boys' teams are seeded in the playoffs. Last year's the city's teams were only in two different divisions. This year, they are spread over four different divisions. Let's look at the breakdowns. Let's start off with the Pioneer League champions, North High. North is seeded ninth in Division 2A and sporting a 20-5 record. However, their last loss may worry some as it came against lowly El Segundo, who had their only league victory against the Saxons. The Saxons are led by Eddie Lee, Ken Flippin, and Devontae Jenkins. The first round matchup is an interesting one as it's a home game against La Habra. La Habra eliminated the Saxons in the second round last year at North 63-57, so North will definitely be looking for revenge after last year's close loss. Winning a CAF game is motivation enough, but even more so against a team that eliminated them last year. Getting to the semifinals would be tough as they most likely would have to face Southern California Power Mayfair if they make the quarterfinals. In Division 3 AA, we have Torrance and South. Torrance finished third in the Pioneer League and is struggling as of late, losing three out of their last four, including a home loss to non-playoff team Centennial. The Tartars have been playing without their star point guard Brett Akahiji, who has a broken foot, but leading them recently has been Brandon Gardner and Shane Smith. The Tartars host Rosemead and at-large from the Mission Valley League in the first round. However, the Tartars actually have a losing record at home, so this is not a gimme victory at all. South finished fourth in the Pioneer League and is an at-large, but by the luck of the draw, they will host in the first round versus Buena Park. South has been struggling, losing four out of their last five, and if the game turns close, the Spartans have struggled, losing four out of their last five games in the games decided by single digits. The Spartans are led by big man Gibran Zawani, who could put the team on his back. Kanichi Hackman is also a big-time shooter, while Lamar Kukretja also helps out. West Torrance finished tied for second in the Bay League and is seeded ninth in Division III AAA. The Warriors are hosting Santa Barbara in the first round as West is sporting a nice 7-1 record at home. The Warriors are led by Fidel Herrera, Brandon Yamada, and Jamin Lackey. The Warriors are definitely battle-tested as two-thirds of their games this year came against teams seeded in CIF playoffs. The second round may be a little dicey for the Warriors as they may have to take a three-hour drive to Royal Grande less than two days after round one. And Bishop Montgomery is the third seed in Division 4 AA, which is called the Super Division, as it features six teams which won either a CIF or state title last year. So for the Knights, a CIF victory would definitely feel great going through this rough division. The Knights finished second in the Delray League with both losses coming to Sarah, who is seeded first in this division. However, they won't have to face them until the finals. Looming in a potential quarterfinal match would be Crespi, one of the Southland's top teams. The Knights are led by a trio of players who either of them could be asked to carry the team. They are Lamont Murray Jr., who has an all-court game and could score anywhere on the floor, Larry Taylor III, who could make the three when needed, and Justin Bibbins, who has had his moments in dominating gameplay also. The Knights face off in the first round against Templeton, ironically the school that eliminated Bimani football in CAF first round in 2010. Patrick, that was a great breakdown. Thanks so much. Who do you think is going to go the furthest in the boys? I'm going to say uh, Bishop Montgomery. And the girls? Uh, West Horns. Well, we shall see. We've got more coming up after this short break, so stick around. 
I love the concept of mentoring because you're really able to make a difference in the life of one young person. My mentor is a role model for me. She told me about all the opportunities that there is in life. She has transformed into an amazing young woman and I feel so fortunate to be a part of that. I think a mentor can really open the eyes of a young person to all the possibilities that are out there for them if they just go after their dreams. So get involved and do your part. Invest in the future. Mentor a child. The South Boys soccer team as Pioneer League champions has been in their rearview mirror. They last won it in 2008. But after a 5 to nothing win against Lawndale last week, they clinched the title. So this next game against El Segundo was a chance to add another win in that column. Ashley Morgado brings this one to you. Since 2008, the boys soccer team at South High have not been able to clinch a league title. That was until this season. Four years in the making, the 2012 Spartan squad won Pioneer League with an undefeated record, along with head coach Chad Lagerway's 100th career victory, achieved during last week's El Segundo shutout. Been a bunch of second place finishes in a row, so it's a, it's a great sense of accomplishment to get through any league without dropping a game, and, and uh, a credit obviously to the guys for, for doing a fantastic job. This team will roll comfortably into CIF playoffs. They have been working very hard to better their last season's first round appearance. Captain for the Spartans, Connor Archibald, talks about their team mindset coming into this year's season. Hopefully we just take uh, go game by game and uh, hopefully make it all the way to the finals. That'd be great to end a senior year. The strong and composed leader has a very interesting story. Archibald remembers not only losing in their first round game last season, but also that he didn't play in it. Me, for me last year, I didn't really play that much, but going to CIF, we lost in the first round, so one of my goals was just to make it to the second round. So you didn't play too much last year, but you're captain this year? Yeah, I guess I just <laughs> stepped up and did, did what I needed to do to get this team, get this team sorted. In their last league match against El Segundo, Archambault played a key role in their 2-0 win over the Eagles. The second half had started slow, and the Spartans were struggling to hold on to their one-goal lead. Frustrated with the refs, Archambault received a yellow card and was taken out of the game. Coach Loggerway let him cool down and then sent him back in. Seconds later, the Spartans fired up. So I kind of just like went into the tackle easily, got the ball, saw Steve Rios on the run. Uh, I asked for the ball back, he played a beautiful ball in and I headed it in. And I don't know, just it was amazing, it was a great feeling. That last victory over El Segundo left the Spartans sitting on cloud nine. While Coach Loggerway let the boys relish in the moment, he knows he has only a couple days to prepare his team for what's to come. We'll try to find out a little bit about whoever it is and, you know, and, and mainly just make sure that we're sharp and we're in a good spot ready to go. So this team finally won a first place title, and deservingly so. They're beyond eager and ready for first rounds of CIF play. From South High School, I'm Ashton Mergado with the Sports Desk. And South's two goals were scored by Steven Ortiz and Connor Archibald. Thanks so much. We have a lot of stuff for you next week. Don't forget the Sierra Challenge over at the golf course. You can find out more information on our city's website. And here's how you can take a look at torrentca.gov. You can always email us at the sports desk at torrentca.gov. That's all the time we have for you. So until next time, Torrance, play hard.